name is Vila Beckham, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Uh, I guess we all like Doctor Who. That's why we're here. So, um... Before, before I get, get into the meat of this video, I just want to let you guys know, I'm giving away Doctor Who. Doctor Who from less contentious times. Doctor Who, I think, from one of the happier times of Doctor Who than we live in right now. I don't know where you are on the on this, on this uh, current era of Doctor Who, but I think there's kind of a divide between us fans, which is sad, really, because I think, bottom line, we all like Doctor Who, you know? I, look, personally, I'm really, really not enjoying at all. I really fundamentally think it's wrong in a lot of ways, the, the Chris Chibnall era. Uh, that's just me for you, you know? <laughs> but, but let's talk about stuff that we like. Let's talk about this Doctor Who, which I'm giving away. Uh, Doctor Who, the complete full series with David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Uh, Davros in it. Oh, absolutely fantastic. All you need to do to win it is leave the hashtag... Oh, is subscribe to my channel. That's the important bit. Okay, I want, I'm happy to give away the DVDs, even though I've got a stack of three I need to mail out, which I haven't got to yet. I feel really bad. Um, <laughs> well, at least the first one's to a friend of mine, so <laughs> who won the draw, so... Um, Oh, I've got to get envelopes, or maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Fine, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so firstly, subscribe to the channel, which is the point. I'm giving, giving away the DVDs. I bought, I, you know, I, I upgraded to Blu-ray. That's why I got to give, get rid of my DVDs. And, uh, I, oh, I'd leave the hashtag Adipose. You can leave it here. You can leave it uh, on Facebook, Twitter, you name it. I'll do I'll do a search for the hashtag, find it. We do the draw on the Tardis Zone. Uh, that's uh, on YouTube, about an hour, an hour and a half after Doctor Who airs. Uh, and we do, and we do the prize drawing. Then normally we're, we're crying and complaining <laughs> about the current episode of Doctor Who. Uh, again, if you if you're a a fan of this season, this season Doctor Who, this this era of Doctor Who, uh, this is no personal attack on you whatsoever. And we would love you to come on the stream and comment because you know I think it's good for us all to get you know different uh, you know hear, hear from different people, different opinions. I think it's a good and healthy thing. So something else we can talk about, which I think is is. Um, uh, less, less contentious than Doctor Who today is Doctor Who Season 26, which just came out on Blu-ray, ordered mine yesterday, should be here hopefully in, in a week or two. I can't wait. It's going to be the, these, the classic Blu-ray um, uh, ser uh, series. It's been fantastic. I loved every single one of them. Again, being such a hater of, of, the, of the current era of Doctor Who, I make my, I, I'm a graphic designer, so I, I make my own covers for them. Uh, and put on like the classic li uh, logo rather than the the Whitaker logo. I'm sorry, I'm, that's just who I am. Okay, but let's talk about stuff we can love. Uh, let's let's review these. Uh, let's preview these these four stories. So if you don't, if you haven't, if you haven't gone back to uh, classic Who before, this is really a good season. This is an interesting season to go go to. This is Doctor Who when it just uh, it was actually Doctor Who was uh, perhaps one of his best uh, best points right before it was cancelled. It, about three years earlier, 86, uh, 85, 86, the, it, Doctor had really, uh, I think, got to its lowest point. Um, there was a lot of the, there was a lot of hatred to the then producer, oh, quite quite hilariously, by Chris Chibnall. He went on live TV uh, and told uh, John Nathan Turner and Pippa Jane Baker, the writers of uh, what was the episode Terror of the Vervoid, which was a very bad episode, all things considered, uh, like like how bad their episode was. <laughs> So you know that's just the way it is. Um, but if so, but th at this point, uh, th yeah, I think think why Doctor Who really fell apart in the eighties uh, it was because um, John Nathan Turner and Eric Saywood, the, the the producer and script editor, hated each other. They just they they, they really fell out, and uh, they just hated being around each other. And Eric Saywood was like, "Yeah, I don't care. Let's do whatever." Nah. Uh, so this was, and then he left quite like quite famously, living an interview. The Starburst magazine, which was like yes, a, uh, a stab in the heart. Um, pro probably not not the best of ideas. To I'm actually suffering a similar fate right now. <laughs> it's like similar in my local synagogue, and I'm still in trouble because of it. Um, but okay, we'll move on. So the th this this was so then they brought in a new script editor, uh, uh, Andrew Cartmel, who uh, he described it as like trying to turn a a massive tanker. So you can't do it in one season, especially four four stories. Can't do it one season. It take it took like two seasons. It was really the sort of McCoy's second season where they started to take on this third season. They were they were they uh, they really hit their stride, and I think it was one of their strongest seasons. Um, it, which is so sad. It was the last one because they really they they were really getting to somewhere interesting. If you want to see where it went, uh, where it would have gone afterwards, so you can look at the the Virgin uh, new, new new adventure range, which was a real a, a, a very organic outgrowing from this series. Uh, or you can watch the, or you can listen to Big Finish did a season of stories for season twenty seven, 
which was like based on the rough ideas of of, of what, what uh, where they were going. They're yeah, not that good. I mean, the new Avengers, uh, the new Avengers novels were absolutely fantastic. If you hey, look, if you don't want, want want to read them, like like me, I hate reading. <laughs> I don't hate reading. It's just like I yeah, you know, I fall asleep. I I started reading uh, Game of Thrones like six months ago. I've nearly finished the first book. <laughs> I read for like five minutes a week. Like, oh, that's pretty good. And then I get into it, and then I get start doing something else. So, but yeah, there you go. Fine. So let's talk about the stories in this set, which is again, it's it, again, it's got much more. It's got still got the problems that that were that were besieging at the time, which is a total lack of confidence from the BBC. BBC had zero confidence in this show whatsoever, and it shows from the resources they allocated it, and it really shows in the first story of the season, Battlefield, which. Script is far, far superior to the the uh, um, the realization of it. Now they they spruce it up, give it better, uh, give it spe be better special effects. But ugh, it's still this yeah, this one still is is suffers suffers from very bad production values. And it was clearly just yeah yeah. Was, I think on the in the on the commentary on the DVD they said yeah all this would have been better if Mike Tucker had was doing the design work for it. So and they're probably right. I think Mike Tucker would have done a much better job. So you had designers. Not really caring, uh, seemingly not really caring. You've got these, these, so you have these knights. And then, okay, the central story is there's a there's a oh, and it's alternative universe. We I think we're talking a lot about alternative universes now in Doctor Who. Uh, and there's an alternative. Oh, wait a minute, this really ties into current Doctor Who. I just realised something. Right now in Doctor Who, we we just had a a new Doctor show up. I just put a, put a video up uh, up about it. And I think the most likely case scenario is a Doctor from an alternate dimension. Even though the Rus Rusty Davis said they can't be Doctors from alternate dimensions when they went to an alternate dimension with the Cybermen, right? The, um, but now, wait a minute, I just remember Battlefield, if you read the, no the novel of it, which is, were written by uh, uh, by the author, um, how was that, Ben uh, Aronovich. Really, really good writer. Um, he has a, pre uh, uh, was a pre uh, prelude that it, oh no, it's not a Doctor from a parallel, you know, but this this... The you have like the uh, Arthurian knights of of legend in a parallel universe, and a future version of our Doctor ends up being Merlin in that dimension, who's a who's a red headed Doctor. Uh, it kind of comes across like Malcolm McLaren. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so essentially, you have you know the this ethereal realm of knights and uh, you know uh, Mordred and um, uh, uh, Morgane and all this Arthurian stuff crashing into modern day. England, which was modern day 80, 1989 England, uh, with with pretty good with pretty good uh, good results all in all. Again, it was it really suffers from uh, from bad production values and but not I want to say bad production values from people who just aren't comfortable doing science fiction. Um, uh, and, and yeah, it shows. But I, acting's great. McCoy just owns the story as a doctor. He is so much presence and so and so come on. This is where he really uh, put together the talking. The, the villain to death, which uh, uh, which he does. That, that, that's really his 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 uh, his trademark. It's very notable for the reintroduction of Unit, which you hadn't seen. I don't think we saw Unit since uh, we saw glim glimpses of it uh, a few years earlier in the Five Doctors, but I don't think we really saw Unit really since the seventies, since Tom Baker uh, and uh, um, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart comes back to it. You see a bit of his home life, which was, which was kind of nice. And they, you get this like new generation of unit, which are like, which is cool as well. You got uh, Brigadier Winifred ba uh, Bambera. Oh, I wish I could remember the actress who plays it. Oh, Angela Bruce. I do remember the actress who plays it, although I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying that off the top of my head, but maybe I'm wrong. I think it's Angela Bruce. She was really good. <clears throat> and it, it just it, it, uh, uh, in general, it was um, it was a really fun updating of like uh, things that we were were used to in Doctor Who from the seventies being brought through into very contemporary late eighties. Yeah, in this story. Uh, yeah, so I think yeah, it's a really fun story. It was flawed, but it totally wor uh, worth watching. Uh, the second story in the set is a three-parter, perhaps one of my favourite um, ever. Actually, it's in really, it's it's my top ten Doctor Who stories ever. Loved it at the time. Uh, Ghostlight, really interesting, creepy story set in a really interesting, creepy haunted house. Or is it? You know, there's all this stuff going on about evolution. And um, I, you know, I don't want to spoil it for you at all. It's really, it's it's absolutely marvelous. It's very gothic, very steampunk, uh, and fantastic performances. It's, it has what's the name? Uh, Rockcliffe. That was his big show. Ro Rockcliffe Babies and the what was it Rockcliffe Folly? I think was a follow-up series. Is it Ian Hogg? 
And we look at going through the... It just had an incredible cast. In Hulk, yeah, stars as uh, Josiah Samuel Smith. Michael Cochran, freaking wonderful as uh, as this um, uh, British uh, Victorian Edwardian uh, hunter. Uh, Redford Fen Cooper. You had Cole, Cole Ford going, no idea who he is, never seen him before, Never, don't think I'll see him again, as Nimrod, a uh, Neanderthal butler. Uh, Sharon Juice as Control, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but she's really good. John, uh, John Nettleson as the Reverend Ernest Matthews, fantastic casting. Uh, Catherine Sledger as Gwendolyn, also fan, did a fantastic job with the job, uh, job with the role. Frank, Frank Windsor, this is just a freaking awesome, awesome cast, an awesome uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, awesome production. Uh, very, very strong script as well. I think Matt Platt's uh, uh, first script he did for Doctor Who, I think it is, I'm not sure. So it, this was supposed to end the big Carpmelian plan where, you, where it took you back to the Doctor's uh, ancestral home, Lung Barrow. But then it was like, they said, well, we don't want to wrap it up too quickly. If you want to know what happened in Lung Barrow, read the book Lung Barrow. Really good. But you can see the, the, the similarities between the two. All right, so the next story is Curse of Frenric. Another just excellent, excellent story. All of these ones have been spruced up with, with new new effects and new cuts. Um, this one is a World War II story and, and a pr pretty clever one at that. It concerns, uh, like, vampires, like toxic vampires from the future. <laughs> That's how, yeah, toxic vampires from the future uh, sent back in the past creating like these vampiric type of vampiric type monsters which the British military want to use uh in their ongoing in in, in uh in the war. Uh and so it's set in like a military research center in, in the middle of World War Two. You got uh, and then you got this um uh group of Russian soldiers trying to steal whatever they what whatever the secret plan is. So you have all these machinations of people coming together, all these different plans going on. And they all work, come together, and it, this this one really gets as the feeling of um, uh, the the Seventh Doctor being the master chess master playing chess on a thousand balls across space and time. Um, great, it's it's really great. Nicholas Parsons is really good as uh, as a guest cast as the uh, Reverend. Uh, who else? The, the, yeah, again, it's a four parter. I think it probably would have been better as a three parter. But but in general, uh, this is really 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 prime Doctor Who, and it, it's so sad that they they, they they got up to this real height before they, and then they pulled the plug, which shows you that quality doesn't really matter, you know, in terms of uh, um, if if a show's going to get get made or not. <laughs> so, and then the, the the final story is really the template for Russell T Davis's Doctor Who when it came back. It's very very contemporary. It's called Survival. It's very very contemporary. It goes into um, a very relatable, like ha housing estate. So it, it, it takes you to uh, Asa, the, the the companion's uh, home, and it's just it's just it's it's very uh, naturalistic and uh, relatable. So and, and then you you graft into that this weird story of this uh, teleporting cats from a different planet and the ma and a desperate master thrown in there. In a titanic fight with uh, 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 life and death struggle with with, uh, with the Doctor, which all really works. The the effects work I found fantastic. This is where the first time you'll see uh, Le uh, Lisa ba uh, Lisa Bowerman, who went on to have a incredible association with Doctor Who, uh, who went on to play uh, Bernie Summerfield in Big Finish and uh, directs a lot of Doctor Who. And so, how many years ago? Eighty nine. So it's just eighty nine. Is that ninety nine? Two thousand nine. Uh, so thirty-one years. This is this is a thirty-one year association with Doctor Who. It begins with this uh, story, survival, uh, and it's really yeah. Again, it's really it, it, if you watch that com and you compare it to Rose, it, they, they seg so well together. Because um, <laughs> I guess that's where where, where TV was going, and it, it you know and it worked. The there's a final um, there's a voiceover on a final uh, on the final shot when they realize this might be the last episode ever, even though they weren't cancelled yet. And that that one was they said that one was literally written on the like the back of cigarette packets that uh, that boys over, and you know it really works as a, as a conclusion to the um, uh, to the original run of Doctor. It's very sad that that we we had a conclusion, but it really did work. I'm surprised they didn't include the Paul McGann movie on this Blu-ray set because when they you know you're going to make a a different set for that one. I think that 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 would be in it. Uh, yeah, that would that that would have filled us out as well. Um, 
tons of extras. Like the extras on these on these sets are absolutely fantastic. I I'm not gonna list I'm not gonna list them. I'm gonna I'll go over it when I when I actually do the reviews of disc of discs. Uh, hopefully, will be you know two two or three weeks. Uh, let me know what you think. You know, let me let, let, let me know, know what your thoughts are. Uh, anything else you want me to talk about? My name is Sula Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Don't forget about the DVD giveaway. Complete season four can be yours. All you need to do is put the hashtag AddiePost and subscribe to my channel. And if you are subscribed, if you can hit the like button, I don't know how that helps me, but apparently it does. So I'm asking you to do it. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day.